Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Well, this here is a John Deere 4840 maintenance video. This is the one that I did the overhaul on. And so, just gonna do, get, do a little video of what all I do to it, getting it ready in the springtime. And um, first thing I gotta do is uh, change the air filters. That's what I'm, get, what I'm gonna get started on now. And I actually put, uh, trying to see if I can find a spot to sit y'all. Yeah, maybe out here on the rock box. I actually put new on all four. Well, now that we have that case 305, on all five of our main tractors, I actually go through and put all new filters in everything air, fuel, hydraulic, and transmission every spring. Some people may say that's a little bit excessive. However, I call it preventive maintenance. But you got this air filter cover up underneath here. I can get the pin pulled out. Okay, there's that guy. Take him out. Then you got this pin right here that holds the filter in place. So you, you pop that out. It's usually kind of a tight spot. I mean, I can move the fan, make a little bit more room. There we go. Also, let me get you picked up and show you. When you go to get the filter down out of here, be careful that you don't go and hit this spot right at that hot point on your alternator. The sparks will fly. So, and there goes my stupid phone off again. All right, that's got the outer filter off. Now we'll get the inner filter out. The inner filter has a, um, Oh, like a big flat nut that holds it on the little stem inside. So you take that off. And pop it. There we go. All right, now ready to put the new ones in. And here's the new ones. Go ahead and put that one in like that. It does have a, like a little washer that goes over the little stem inside there to seal everything up. It's got kind of like a rubber coating on one side. Put that on. And then tighten it down. I'll take and stick you up in here that way you can see it better. And just take and tighten that little flat nut up. There we go. Now ready for the big one. And there's the big one. Same thing, only in, re only in reverse. A tight squeeze. Well, that's odd. Huh. So pretty thick. Never had that problem before. Let's take a look. I found out what was causing the problem. Evidently, they must be a different manufacturer that's making these filters. They ran a bead of glue 
kind of like in a no, kind of like kind of spiraling down from top to bottom, and they made it so thick that the inner filter it wants to catch on that. So I took the old inner filter and just ran it in and out of there a few times, and I saw like little shavings of glue, of glue coming out. So that can't help open that old, that glue ring up. Let's see what happens. easier that works and just take and tighten him back down you're good to go Next up, you got the cap here, it just goes over the end. And generally, throughout the season, I'll take the air gun and blow these things out also. Go up and in. Put him on, and you're good to go. And another thing I do, let me get you a little bit closer. This here is kind of like a pre-cleaner and it will actually catch dirt. And so I keep that base as straight down as possible. That way you can catch as much dirt from the inside. And um, something else I did years ago, I took Gorilla Tape and taped this piece here shut. Because what was happening is it wants to draw air right through here. That sucks in a bunch of dirt also. And so I just keep that all taped shut. That way it can't go and suck air to air up that way. And um, it makes it pull air from the standpipe up there. And so that's just an idea. Take and, pl and uh, tape that cap shut. Because, um, uh, oh, it's, it's not too uncommon. You'll get quite a bit of dirt building up inside this thing. Which is what you want the dirt building up inside of here instead of all being packed inside your air filter. And you have a 3 8 nut there on that stem and pulled down tight like that. And there you go. Air filters are changed. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to jump next to the fuel filters. Here you're going to take your battery cover off. Of course, I just had all this stuff taken off my overhauled motor. Take this cover here out. And uh, first thing you want to do is take and, sh and get up underneath the fuel tank and turn the valve off. Shut the fuel off the thing. Then you just have these simple little clip deals that just clip over and hold it holds that fuel footer on. So I'm going to go grab the new filters. All right, I put a bucket down below here. We'll just start with the front one. It's got two. Pop that one off. Now if you get that bracket, the throttle cable runs directly beneath that, so you don't have much room. Okay, there's that guy. Yeah, keep your feet back. That way you don't get a bunch of fuel dumped on top of you. Okay, eh, not too bad. And of course, it had to miss the bucket that I had sitting there. So I'll go ahead and take and drain out the filters. And then once I've got everything all changed, then I'll take and um, clean up where it ran down the side. I was getting a little bit of motor oil and come to find out the tachometer cable where it screws in, tightens down right there, was getting loose. And it was, it was spitting a little bit of motor oil, to, causing it to leach out right there. So I got that all tightened up, and so we're good to go on the tack. Now if you have a 55 series, or probably even a 50 series, 
it's going to have all digital tap, not a cable anymore. Okay, there's that one. Oh, now we're ready for the new filters. And right there's one new one. And I'm taking the sitting right in there like that. Grab your spring clip. It's always best if you take a hook in the bottom first. And that way you can just be pushing on the top and it latches. Now on the 4955, it's got one filter right here and then on down the way, oh back over here beside the fuel pump, it's got a uh, kind of like a little replaceable inline strainer. And I replace that as well every year. Like I say, some people probably just run them until they, the tractor starts losing horsepower. Well, I can tell you one thing, I'm not doing that. Because you know when it's going to lose horsepower right smack dab on a nice day when you're trying to plant corn or something like that. Then you got to stop and fiddle with this here for a while. Okay, now, time to start bleeding out the air and I'll show you how to do that. When you get ready to bleed out the air, of course, get back up underneath here. Uh, I'm not too sure how we can, uh, you can't really see it too easy. But uh, take and turn the fuel back on. And then over here on the end of the fuel filter bracket, that little bolt head right there, you want to take and loosen that guy up. And I, oh, okay, it's a 5 eighths. Take and loosen that guy up. That's your bleeder. Now let the air out. You don't have to take it completely out, but just loosen up good. Next thing you're gonna do, you have this little primer pump right here on your lift pump on the fuel, oh, here, here that hang, well, the lift pump drives off the side of the injection pump. And just start pumping that little thing up and down. And then you can see right back there, the fuel's coming in the filter. Now, some of the newer style filters, in fact, the 4955 takes it. Instead of being glass, it's metal, same thing. So you're just going to take and pump that up until you begin to see fuel up here at the top. And then of course it'll begin to push out this little ble bleeder right there at that bolt head. Okay, I've been pump working on that little primer pump. That's got the fuel begin to drip out of that little bolt head. Just take, tighten back up. And um, uh, then what I do is I'll pump this until I can hear it shoving fuel back into the fuel tank through the return. However, one thing I failed to do, and I'll do it here as soon as I get done shoving the air out of the filters, is I'll turn the tank back off. I gotta clean that sediment bowl right there. Like I said, the 4955 does not have that, and that, that little inline strainer took the place of a sediment bowl. But I can see a little bit junk in the bottom of that. I just shut the tank back off. I'll take and clean out this little sediment bowl. Get my bucket put back underneath there. Just gotta watch, you don't want to tighten that down too tight, otherwise you'll break that glass. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you can see a little bit of junk on that little screen. And if you can kind of look up to the bottom of that, you can see some junk in the butt in the bottom of that bowl. We'll just take and dump that out into the bucket. Eh, still got some crud in there, so I'm going to take and clean that all out good. 
Yeah, it's got it all cleaned out. Now you just put the bowl back in, put the little tensioner back under it, and tighten him down. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to take and turn the fuel on. We'll pump that air out and that'll have it. Now, one thing you can do, can't loosen that little screw back up in the bottom. Now, now I got the tank back on. And it should begin to push. It'll let the it'll let, it'll let the fuel in and camp and push the air out. You can see the fuel level coming up right there. There we go. All right, that's got it. Okay, that's got the fuel footers all changed, sediment bowl cleaned, and like I say, I'll I'll be get take a um, I'll take a can of ether and clean all that down good. If you've never used ether as a cleaner, let me tell you something. It works great, and it's a whole lot cheaper than brake cleaner. And so, all right, uh, the last two things are the hydraulic and transmission filter, and I'll be showing you how to do them as well. All right, these filters just fit, sit right down here on the side. In fact, let me take you back off the side of the housing. I'll show you. They're in these canisters, one here, one here. And um, now the other 48, they're actually stamped right up here in the casting, which one's which. But if I remember right, this here is the tranny. This here is the hydraulic. But... Um, as far as when you go to fill it with oil, it's all the same uh, thing. And so you, you put the transmission and hydraulic oil all right down the same tube. So let's see if I can get you set back up here without falling off into the oil bucket. Uh -oh. And um, just take a wrench, put it right here on the end. There's a little bolt head screw and just screw it right out of the side. Make sure you have a bucket sitting underneath the thing to catch the oil. Just make sure you don't drop your GoPro into the oil too. Oil too. <laughs> and that just spins out like that. That canister housing. Well, if you can get it to line up right, you can just take it right out the end. It's got that big draw bolt. Dump your oil back in the bucket. Go ahead and pull the filter out. Drop that down your bucket. I've already got the new filter here sitting beside me. And hopefully you can see that. Just take your new filter. Drop it right back down in the side there. And plug it right back into the housing. And you're good to go. That's got it. Just take and put the wrench back onto it, tighten him up, you're good to go. Now I will say changing the these two filters between the John Deere's and that um, Alice Chalmers 8070, these here are definitely a lot easier. Just the way that they're they go in and out of the side. Which is actually kind of shocking for John Deere because they always seem to pick the hardest way possible and then build in that direction so this is one time they actually got it right <laughs> try and get that thing rolled around there there we go all right that's got one then just pull that back down good and tight there is a o-ring gasket that sits right inside there so just make sure that that don't fall out okay we're done with one and now we're going to jump back to the back one. I'll just go ahead and show you right quick here on this back one. Same thing. 
Come on, screw him out. Just like that. And there goes the oil. In fact, speaking of oil, um, the guy that we've always gotten our hydraulic oil through for years, the company that he has worked with now for a long time, ended up uh, telling him that they were going to stop selling him oil. And come to find out that um, they wanted him to make, make such a great big order that he wasn't going to be able to even move it or sell that much. And so that pretty much put a stop to us. And so I had, had to start hunting around for another company. And I had thought about checking out uh, the Case Hytran. However, I had some guys tell me that um, they would not recommend putting the Hytran in the John Deere power shift transmissions. I'm not exactly sure why because I've I've had other people tell me that um, John Deere, well, the, well, what's called the John Deere High Guard and the Case High Tran, both come from Conoco Phillips. I'm not sure on that. That's just what I've heard. So anyway, just be on the safe side. Figured we'd go with the higher grade and went with uh, Schaefer, which is comparable to what we've actually been running. And so I've had several people tell me that uh, if you want want the best, go with Schaefer. And my dad actually used to run that way back years ago, I think. Just take and screw this canister as well. Same thing, right back in there and tighten him up. There we go. All right, that's got it done. Okay, here's one of our old hydraulic oil barrels called Super Torque, red with tack. And I'd be curious if anybody has ever heard of this company manufactured for, manufactured for Shadow Facts Projects, 18 Bradford Hills, Sullivan, Illinois. And so, like I said, I'd just be curious if anybody's ever heard of that company. It's, we've, all, um, we've always had good luck with it. And like I say, um, as far as quality-wise, it, it would be comparable to a Schaefer. But um, like I say, the guy that we've always dealt with, this company here told him basically, see ya. So that's real customer service right there. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to call this an end of the maintenance video. Uh, sure enough, when I, the other 48 that's got the rock boxes on it, when I went to change the fillers, I forgot to grab the camera. So I just showed you here on the other 48 that we have. It's identical, so no, no, no difference. But um, yes, yeah, so that's some um, uh, doing maintenance on the 4840. And so I figured I'd get some video of it. So take care. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.